Good evening, everyone. Good evening. You all right? Yes. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Half a glass. Is it half full or half empty? Oh, half full. <laughs> You're in trouble if you say that. I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Been down that road. <laughs> right then, let's turn to Ephesians chapter two. It's a well-known portion of scripture to you. Ephesians 2, you that? 2. 2, chapter 2. Ephesus is in what country? Turkey. Oh, you've got to give it away, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's in oh, Turkey. It it's in Turkey. Claire and myself have been very privileged to be able to go to Ephesus and uh, see the... The ruins there, which are uh, absolutely amazing. Well, they say ruins. <laughs> you could live in both, most of them, actually. Um, and to see the amphitheatre, and to go to the house of Alexander, where the Apostle Paul went, and uh, debated and spoke uh, with the people there. But, of course, they surrounded, even though it's in Turkey, they... Is there a thing going on here? It's echoing, Anna. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. Um, even though he's in Turkey, they're under Roman rule. So all the uh, gods of the Romans are there in Ephesus. And uh, Paul comes to Ephesus and uh, he writes back to them. In this letter, he writes to them in chapter 2, you, you are well acquainted with these words. And you, he has made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of this air, the spirit of who now works in the sons of disobedience. He's speaking about Satan. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, just as others. In other words, because we lived that way, we had the wrath of God upon us. What does a person got to do to go to hell? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Person comes into this world, baby comes into this world, the Bible tells us, born in sin. And unless that child, unless that teenager, unless that adult comes to realise that their nature is corrupt by sin and that they are separated from God because of that, unless they realise that and then acknowledge I need help I need help the Bible teaches us the only help can come from God and the help has come from God through Jesus going to the cross for you and me and unless we realize that we don't do, have to do anything we are all on the broad road, as the Bible describes, which leads to destruction. destruction. So we were children of wrath, just as the others. And I love this word, but. <laughs> but God, this is the escape route. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead. He loved us when we were dead. 
in our trespasses, even then he chose to make us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And he has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Even when we were dead in trespasses, in sins, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. What's the meaning of grace? No, 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 no. I'm going over here now, right? Okay, I will. Give me a meaning of grace. Give me any, anything comes into your mind. Anything. Kindness. Anything. Look, Kindness. Yeah, there you go, there you go. Now then, let, let, think about the way we use the word grace. Right, is anybody here called Grace? Right, well that's out. We can be graceful. Yeah? We can actually show grace. What does that mean, Edward? That's kindness. Yeah, but it's kindness in the light of what? Understanding as well. Yeah, understanding what? Uh, come on, John. <laughs> break, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not going to give you a break at all. <laughs> this, this is the meaning, this is the dictionary meaning, right, of grace. Good. Grace is the unmerited favour. I knew that. <laughs> unmerited favour. So, you are showing then forgiveness to somebody who in the circumstances and in the events of life doesn't really deserve it. Mm. Yeah? Mm. Would that be fair? Okay. Would that be fair? Grace? Yeah. That is what Paul is talking about here. When he says to us, you, by grace, you have been saved. In other words, did you deserve it? No. Why? And? And? Come on. Why don't yeah. you deserve it then? Because he is what? What is he different to us? He's holy. There is no sin. The Bible says there is no sin in him whatsoever. Mm. Nothing at all. There's no shadow in him. No shadow of darkness. He is light. And if a shadow comes in, a slight shadow, even a little bit of a shadow, that means there's something wrong with God. But in him, there is no shadow of darkness. So when we come into his presence, what do we bring? What are, what are we? What do you say? Darkness. So could he really um, tolerate us? No. No, no, no. So something had to happen for you and me ever to be able to come into his presence, to acknowledge him, to, to, to get past this wall. Something had to happen. Paul tells us here, you have been saved by grace. There's a translation of this uh, that, I, that I like. It was um, a modernized Berean translation. 
Remember the Bereans in Acts chapter 17? They studied the scriptures. There's a modernized um, translation of this, of this verse, and it says this, God's rescue arrives to us as a pure gift of grace. God's rescue. When do you need to be rescued? When you're in trouble, isn't it? You don't need to be rescued if you're sitting in Tesco's having a cup of coffee. You need to be rescued when you're in trouble. And he's saying to you, God's rescue comes to us as a pure gift, a pure gift of grace. Have you ever been rescued? Yeah. When? When I got stuck out there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a corker that you've got to give in there. Walter came to shame. Walter came down because you were tapping on the little window. And... <laughs> Help! <laughs> you, you don't know about that. It, 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 it was classic. Oh, we've heard about it many times. Many times. Anybody else been rescued? Yeah, when I uh, was nearly drowning. <laughs> Where was that? In, I think it was Butlins, when we went to Butlins. And they got that word, you know where it goes lazy river, and then it goes it really faster, fast, faster. and I was going closer to the neck and in the machine. <laughs> and um, yeah, I started to, the woman had to, uh, she had to jump. They're like, oh. they're the lifeguard. And... Anybody, anybody else been rescued? Been rescued? I You need a butcher at that time. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wow. Yeah. 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 Well, there was nobody outside to turn you up to 300. Yeah. You know, then, yeah. <laughs> so you're rescued. Mm-hmm. Right. I was rescued from a from a pool in Porthcall. Aye. My, my brother kicked the ball into a pool. I was three, whatever I was. And he said, go, go and get it. So I went to get it. And it was one of those pools that were sort of being made you know there was part of it that was concrete the other part wasn't and i just went in and you know carried on going and then next thing i was going down and my mother uh, was not a swimmer my mother dived into the pool to get me out uh, and rescued me yeah yeah and there was another situation in my life as well i was in a car crash um, on the m4 and my mother was driving. I was 16, I think, from that. Well, yeah, right, put it this way. I was looking for a motorbike, so I had a motorbike magazine in front of me. And uh, my mother was driving, and something happened. We had a blowout in the, in the back tyre. And uh, I remember looking over the magazine and seeing cars coming in a different direction. So I thought, hmm. The next thing we flipped over the barrier between the two, you know, the dual carriageway. Not far from Newport, actually. And we tumbled, boom, 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 down the road. My mother was doing about 60 to 70 miles an hour. And the car was basically crushed down to about that point. And um, I remember being pulled out of, of the car. Um, by a man from Aberdeer. <laughs> and he put me on the grass by the side. Now, keep in mind now, the old motorway was shut. But, well, this is what I learned after. And the old motorway was shut off with ambulances <laughs> everywhere. And I was on the grass. And this man 
from Abde. I know he was from Abde because I recognised him. But he was pouring a year day in my mouth and I don't know why. And I was spitting it out as far as he, as fast as he was spitting it, he was pouring it in. But he was obviously in shock himself because he was there, you know. And we were taken to um, Newport Hospital um, where <coughs> I couldn't breathe. So they didn't know what they were going to do with me because I couldn't, I couldn't get my breath. Now we're going back to the era. Do you remember love beads? Remember we used to have long beads and you'd wrap them around your oh, neck yes, and wrap them yes, around yeah, your yeah. neck. And you'd have about three layers and then there'd be <coughs> hanging down with there. Yeah. Well, I had metal love beads. And in all the tumbling and the whatever that went on, these things had wrapped themselves tighter and tighter and tighter around my neck. <laughs> it's laughable now. Um, and uh, they, they, they were putting thing, the mask on me to give me oxygen because I couldn't breathe. Got there, got the hospital, uh, x-rays, and then they seen this line. What had happened is my skin had folded over everything. So they had no idea what was going on until this doctor saw what was happening and he sort of parted my skin. <laughs> I had these snips and went, and I went, <gasps> and I could breathe. <clears throat> and I was rescued. Wow. Can I but, just tell you a very quick, uh, yeah, it's all right, it's done. Yeah, yeah. I said, because uh, God is so good. Um, we were going somewhere and my mum, it's good if I don't drive because I follow my mum. <laughs> Um, so she was driving. Oh, which way do I go? Which way? My nan and Bampy were all in there. <coughs> this way, no, that way. We got the car got stuck in a cattle grid. <coughs> so my mum prayed and said, "Oh Lord, do I say incredible Hulk when we need him?" And all of a sudden, this guy appeared, massive. You've never seen anything like it, and lifted it out. Oh, and the cattle grid, yeah. 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 And then he just, yeah, that was it. He's gone. Gone. Yeah. It's gone. Exactly. Yeah. Very mm. so. Yeah. We've experienced acts of grace, you know, um, re being rescued. You know, they are in our life, isn't it? You know, they, they rescue so many people. The ones who go up the mountains, the mountain rescue people. They, they, they do this now on a, on, on a voluntary basis. Mm -hmm. But they go up these mountains, they put themselves in a place of danger. Um, and it's, it's an act of grace. It, it, you know, you, you can be a person that will donate bone marrow to somebody, you know, that you've matched up with or that they found, and we've seen this on the telly, and they've given the bone marrow or they've given the kidney, whatever. It's an act of grace. We see them all around us, acts of grace. It's a mirror of the nature that was put into Adam first of all. Because when Adam was in his first condition in the Garden of Eden, he was righteous. He was perfect. And he was able, you know, to, to see these things, it's a, it gives us an, <coughs> an, uh, 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 an image of what might have been all over the world. If Adam had not sinned. Acts of grace. You don't, people who give bone marrow, people who give a kidney, they don't have to do it. No. Nobody's got a gun to their head. No. Nobody's saying you've got to, got to do it. But they do it. That is grace. Grace is when God gives us things we don't deserve. Grace can be that we give to others that they don't deserve. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah. We see a little bit of God in acts of grace. And especially when Paul is writing these words here to the Ephesians, he says, God, you have been saved. By grace. You don't deserve it. There's nothing you can do to ever merit it or earn it. 
but by an act of pure grace, he has saved you. Think about the Israelites. When, when God said to them in chapter 6 of Exodus, he says, I will rescue you from the bondage of Egypt. God's rescue was coming to them. They, they were stuck. They were in the place. They, 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 they had been promised so many things, but yet they didn't seem to be happening. But God knows the timing. God's got everything in control. That's the problem that we don't like. Because we want God's timing to be our timing. And many times God's timing is not our timing at all. He knows the perfect time for everything. And in the process of time, this baby is born in a family, in an obscure family, who's placed in a, in a, in a, in a basket in the bulrushes, whom, by chance, Pharaoh's daughter takes into her, into her family and he becomes part of the, of the uh, royal household in, in, in Egypt. Mm -hmm. We work that one out. Just finding a baby in a basket in, in the Nile, being brought into the royal household of Egypt to be placed in a position where he knows all about the workings of Egypt. And he knows everything that goes on in the minds of the Egyptian people. To be brought into a position. And then he goes and kills somebody. Oh. 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 Hang about then. <laughs> That's a bit of a stamp on it, isn't it? That's a bit of a foot on it. And then he's got to, he's got to run away. And he goes, he goes out in, into, into the wilderness. And uh, as one writer has, has put it about him, he's got 40 years learning to be somebody for himself. Then he learns 40 years to be a nobody because he's out in the wilderness. And then he has 40 years to learn to how to be somebody for God. Because that's when God takes hold of him. And through Moses, this little baby that was out in the bulrushes, who would ever have thought that that person would ever have come into this place. But God, in his grace, in his mercy, brought this, this child to become a leader in Egypt and eventually to be the leader of the people of Israel who would take them out. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine leading two and a half million people? What do you want it? But, you know, leading two and a half million people out of slavery, out into the wilderness, thinking, we freedom, here we can. No, the flags are flying. And we, they only go a few, few, Miles in, into the desert, and what did they say? We show us back in Egypt. <laughs> back in Egypt, we had leeks and garlic. What would you rather have, freedom or leeks and garlic? Well, we, we, we want both, but we haven't got leeks and garlic, so we're going to moan. So they moaned about everything that, they, that went on. And the, the, the uh, Pharaoh went after them. God brought them right to, to the borders of the of the uh, the Red Sea, there was no way forward, there was no way back. So what did he do? He opened the Red Sea for them and he put a fire pillar behind them so that they could not even come forward. The, the Pharaoh's people couldn't come forward. So they had a free passage across through the Red Sea. Was this because they deserved it? No. 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 And were they going to be showing to be people that they really did deserve it? No. no. Because they continued to moan. We haven't got enough water. We haven't got enough bread. We've got no meat. 
So when he gave them quails, he, he, he gave them manna every day. He gave them quails in the evening for them to... Have you had a quail? Can you afford a quail? <laughs> you want 15 for a sandwich. <laughs> but he, he gave them these... It's a delicacy, isn't it, quail, really? But he fed these people. He watered his people. He led his people. Did they deserve all these things? We can answer and say on their behalf. No. no. And he comes to a woman. <laughs> many, many years later, the same one who led them through the wilderness, who kept them, who provided for them, the same one comes to a woman standing who's just been thrown in front of him because she's been caught in adultery. It's the same person. And they say, what do the leaders of the church say? Oh, God, we're a bunch of me. The leaders of the church say, this woman should be stoned to death. What does Jesus say? Any one of you who is without sin, let that be the first person to throw a stone at her. And you can almost hear the stones hitting the ground. Because the Bible tells us they left from the eldest to the youngest. They left and they left their stones on the ground. What did Jesus do? He picked this woman up. She, it was obviously, obviously an entrapment situation. She'd been entrapped by the people, the leaders of the church. And probably you never hear the mention of the one who she was committing mm -hmm. adultery with. So it was probably one of the hierarchy. Mm -hmm. He says to her, who here is condemning you? And she said, nobody... What did he say to her? Did he say, that's okay. He said, go, but do not sin anymore. An act of grace. An act of grace. Saved that woman's life. It literally saved that woman's life. Because he knew the hearts of the ones who were condemning her. On the night that our Lord was being betrayed, what an act of grace. They sat down together. Remember the Last Supper? Mm -hmm. They sat down together. And you can read it for yourself. It's in John chapter 13. And if this is, this is not an act of grace, I don't know what is. But he sat down with his disciples. And during the proceedings, he went away and he came back with a towel and a bowl of water. And he proceeded <coughs> to wash the disciples' feet. Who's included in the disciples? He washed his feet. Because it was after the washing of the feet. And they came to the, to the supper. Jesus himself said, The one who dips in the bowl with me is the one who will betray me. So he'd already washed his feet, knowing mm. that he was going to betray him. Is that an act of grace? Mm. Yeah. Of course it is. Showing the heart of God. He goes and he takes the place of Barabbas. Doesn't have to, does he? Barabbas was going to be... He's going to be crucified. But he takes the place of Barabbas and is crucified. And even after uh, being crucified and put in the grave, he comes back and he comes back to Peter. Mm -hmm. Acts of grace. Were they they not deserved? They acts of grace are not deserved. But he does it because he wants to, and he was displaying and showing to you and me 
the heart and the nature of God, his Father. That he is a God of grace, a God of forgiveness, a God who opens his heart to you and me. He rescues us. He rescues us where we are. Anybody remember August 2010? Ooh, what a bad one, isn't it? Come on, come tell me. <laughs> Mr. Google? Yeah. August 2010. 33 men were trapped in a Chilean mine. 2,000 feet below ground. In solid rock, actually. Remember? Yeah. Remember it now, didn't you? For two months, right, these are the facts. For two months, they had, between the 33 of them, right, this is each, they had two spoons of tuna, a sip of milk, and half a slice of peach every other day. Not every day, every oh. other day. Right? Two spoons of tuna. Don't know big the spoon right? Sip of milk, half a slice of peach every other day. And for two months they prayed and they prayed for rescue. Now no one had ever survived this deep in, in, in the ground. In fact, NASA got involved, if you remember, with all that, that was going on. The plan to drill down. NASA was involved in, in, in that plan. But there were no guarantees, were there? No, not to ever. But on October the 13th, 2010, 33 men were rescued in a capsule one by one. Remember that? It was going up like a, like a wide drill bit. Uh, just being dragged back up. Each one, one by one. Each of them, which is quite obvious, each of them realised that they needed help. <laughs> I don't think even one of them didn't realise that, that they all needed help. Each of them realised that they couldn't do it by themselves. Somebody else had to do it. If they were ever going to live, if they were ever going to survive, somebody else had to do it. And here it comes. Help came from above. Help came from the surface by all the technology, all the things that God has given to us. And they were able to get those people up one at a time. Can you see the picture? Not one, not one of us can help ourselves. No. Not one of us can ever get up there. Help has got to come from above. Got to come from above. The reality is that help has come from above. Jesus came as, if I can put him like this, please, I'm not trying to diminish him, right? He came as God's drill bit. And he came down to where we were. And he opened the way. And not only opened the way, but he made the way of rescue for us to go back up. He went to the cross for you and me because he knew that all that you and I are, and we're such good people, aren't we? No. Well, we are, aren't we? <laughs> well, there's a, there's a lot of nobility in 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 humanity we look at our queen there's a lot of nobility isn't there you know she was a good person um she led the country through 70 years she gave her own personal identification with the lord jesus christ of her faith in the lord jesus But because she was uh, in nobility, did that mean she was going to heaven? 
No, no. She realized that she was a sinner. Yeah. And she realized that she needed a savior who she said herself was Jesus Christ. Yeah. You see, we, we are we we need to come to a place where we realize I can't do this by myself. Yeah. I just can't do this. I'm never going I'm never because of what I know I am, because of because I may know now let's be honest with each one of us, right? We know our own sinful nature, don't we? Yeah? yeah? yeah. Every day. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. We struggle with it. Yeah. And because of that, we're never gonna get into God's presence because He's holy. So the only way we're gonna do this that somebody takes all the bad things that we do, our sin that we do, and he takes it on himself to the cross, which Jesus did, and we simply accept that for ourselves. We take it for ourselves. We say, Lord, thank you for doing that for me. I don't deserve it. I know I don't deserve it. But thank you for doing that for me. And in so doing, you are acknowledging that he's come to rescue you. To lift you out of where you are. To take you to where you should be. To take you to the place where he wants you to be. To make you the person he wants you to be. And it's all because of grace. Nothing we've done for it. Nothing we've blown our trumpet about for it. Nothing we've even thought ourselves that we are, you know, well, I'm not that bad a person. I've I got to I gotta take a, a, um, a funeral on uh, Thursday. And um, he's, he's unchurched. You know, do you know Christian who works for me? It's his father. Um, he's un the, the, the whole family is unchurched. Um, but I've just got to make it simple that Jesus Christ is there for them. Yeah. And that his grace <coughs> extends to everyone. Yeah. You know, he doesn't leave anybody out. He doesn't say, well, it's okay. No, no, then, no. He extends his grace and his forgiveness to everyone. Everyone. And it's not because we're good. It's not because of that. It's because of his grace. He rescues me. He comes to me. He lifts me out of where I was. He puts my feet on a rock. He takes me out, as the Bible says, out of the mire and the clay. And he cleanses me and washes me and he puts my feet on a rock and he adds to me so much. It's all because of God's grace. Will you and I, will we accept it? Will we accept God's grace for ourselves? We're not going to force it on us because it's grace. It's a gift. But it's there for you and me now. Might not be there tomorrow morning. Mm. You know the person that I'm going to be burying on, on Thursday? Mm. Didn't know that tomorrow was not going to be there. And neither do you or I. Mm. No. His grace is there for you and me now. Yeah. Will you accept it? Will you take it? God help us. Amen.